Hello, this is Tim from milehighthemes.com. We're the creators of the multi-theme. And in this video, we are going to go through some of the product page options and settings so you can set up your product pages. So first of all, I've got a clean version of the theme installed here. I'm in the online store under sales channels and themes. And I'm going to click customize. From here, I'm going to click this drop down and choose products and go to the default product template. Now, you may have multiple other templates in here if you've created some, but for now, we just have the default. So I'm going to click on that. And this is the template that's affecting all of the products in the store currently. So you can see that we've got some sections here from the theme. All the product details are here. And then we have some additional sections down here. Of course, all of these sections are optional. We've just added them for you in case you want to use them to match our demos. But you can scroll down here and see all of the different sections over here on the left. Promotional banner up here. And if you don't want any of this and you just want the product details, you can simply hide these or delete them by clicking these icons and they will go away. The product information section over here on the left is the main product information for that will change obviously depending on which product we're looking at and then all the rest down here video with text product information accordion with images and these other sections can all be hidden or edited and of course you can add your own sections just like you would anywhere else by clicking add section and choosing from this list so I'm going to assume that you understand how to set up your own sections on the pages. So for now, we are just going to focus on the product image or the product functionality itself. And we can do that by clicking on this product information heading. And we see all of the settings that we have that are more global for your products over here. So you can see you can choose some different options for the layout, background colors. You can choose how you want your gallery to display over here. You can choose the width. And there's a lot of different other options here. I'll point out this enable sticky add to cart bar, which we think is a pretty cool feature. So as you see, if we scroll down the page, eventually this bar will appear and stay sticky at the bottom so people can easily add it to the cart no matter where they are on the page. So that's a handy feature. Um, further down, uh, the theme includes a specifications table that you can enable. So by clicking this checkbox, it will appear over here on the left. And I will go ahead and show you how to populate this a little bit later in the video. But just showing you for now that it's there. And we also have this buy together and save product upsell slash bundling option that you can enable. And it's a pretty cool feature that most themes don't have. So I will go into detail about how to set that up shortly as well. So I will put chapters in this video too if you want to jump right to specific sections. So hopefully that will be helpful. But these are the main product options for the page. And then over here are all the blocks for the product page, which include things like product title, obviously, the rating, if you have a reviews app, Pricing, we have this countdown option that is turned on right now. You don't actually see it because we have to set up a meta field for that, which I will show you how to do. We have the variant selector options here. You can click those to make some changes to how they appear. In this case, there are buttons and they're showing variant images on here. You can change some different options for that. Um, we have, this is where you would set up your color swatches too. So we have a we have a separate video and tutorial article about using color swatches. So check our theme documentation area for that. And we've got some other options for the variant selections. We've got this ability to compare product options, which we think is pretty unique. You click on that, it opens this drawer where you can see all the different options in a list view. So this might be helpful for some of your customers if you have a huge list of products or a huge amount of variant options to choose from, they can see them at a glance in this list view and add them to the cart from here. 
We have the stock status, obviously. We have the buy buttons, of course, and the social sharing over here. So those are the main blocks there. If you want to add additional blocks or hide any of these, you can. You can delete them completely by clicking the trash can icon, or you can just hide them with the eye icon. You can drag them around to any position you want. So if for some reason you want the social sharing to be up under the price, you can put that there if you like. So there's a lot of different options in here. And then we've got a lot of different blocks to choose from that you can add for your product details. We've got some accordions, you know, so you can add some text that appears in a collapsed section. We've got pop-ups, we've got upsell products, custom HTML, custom liquid, trust icons, and all kinds of things. So we encourage you to experiment with those. And of course, if you have any questions about how any of those work, you can reach out to our support team for help. So at this point, I'm going to jump in and talk about some of the more advanced features and how to set them up. So first, we will talk about the specifications table here and how that is set up. So again, I'm going to click in this product information heading and the specifications are here. So you can see that we have this brand in here and it's pointed to the field for the vendor for the specific product. So the vendor for this product is just this test gibberish here. But obviously, if you'd set an actual vendor for this product, then it would update and show in here. And then the title is just a title meta field of the product. So it's just showing the product title again in this case, which is just 11 inch tablet, but we can edit these. So if I went in here and I just added something like screen resolution and put just typed in whatever the resolution of this tablet was, let's say it was 1920 by 1080. It'll show up here, but it will show this information, the same information on every product that you've enabled the specifications for. So you see how these have these little buttons with that little icon next to it. That means it's a dynamic source. So that means this information is going to update based on which product we're looking at. So if we switch to a different product here in the preview by clicking change here, then whatever the brand of whatever product we change to is going to update here. And whatever title of the product will update here. But this, since we've just typed it in like this, it's going to show this specification on every other product, whether or not it's 1920 by 1080 or not. So in this case, we need to use dynamic sources so we can update this on a product by product basis. So instead of just typing it in here, I'm going to clear this out. And you see this little icon up here that says connect dynamic source. I'm going to click that. And we've created a bunch of different meta fields up here already. So in this case, I'm going to choose the screen resolution. And you can see that it populated some data in here. So where did this data come from? Well, it came from a dynamic source, which is also known as a meta field. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of here and show you where you can find meta fields. So if we go to the settings area of our store and go down to custom data, and we're going to go to products, here are all the meta fields that we've already created. Now these probably won't exist on your store. We've only created them on our store. You'll have to go in and create these yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to create a new one. I'm going to just click add definition. I'm going to call this screen resolution text. Since we already have a screen resolution in here, I don't want to cause any confusion. This name is just for our own use so we can find it easier later. And then a description, again, is only for our own use. You don't need to fill in anything here if you don't want. I'm going to click Select Type. And this is just going to be a single line text field. So obviously, there's a lot of other different options here for what we're referencing. But in this case, we just want single line text since it's just a line in the specifications table. So there's some other options here that you can typically just ignore. And I'm going to click Save. 
So the meta field is now created, and now we can change the product to use this meta field. So I'm going to close out of here. Now I'm going to go to my products, and I'm going to find that 11-inch tablet, which is our first product here. And if we scroll down to the bottom, you'll see that all of the meta fields associated with this product are here. You can see that we have some filled in and some we don't. So the screen resolution text meta field that I just created is not filled in. So I'm going to say that this tablet has a resolution of 1920 by 1080 pixels. And then I'm going to save this. And now I'm going to go back here. Sometimes when we add meta fields and save them, it takes a minute or two in Shopify for those to kick in and get written to the server. So I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to save and I'm going to let this reload. And now for screen resolution, I need to change this dynamic source. So I'm just going to remove this, click this icon again to connect to dynamic source. And remember that we named it screen resolution text. So I'm going to click show more. And there it is here, screen resolution text, 1920 by 1080 pixels. So this is how you can populate a specifications chart that shows different information on different product pages. Okay, the next feature we're going to talk about is this buy together and save. And this is using the product recommendations engine that comes with Shopify using their free search and discovery app. So again, I'm in this product information heading I've clicked on and we're in the product bundle area here and that controls this. So it says you can specify complementary products with the Shopify search and discovery app. And we've got that enabled by just clicking this icon here, this checkbox, and we can change the heading text right there. So how do we choose these products? Well, if we don't choose any, then the algorithm for Shopify will automatically choose some products here. That's probably not ideal. I'm sure that if you're creating a bundle, you want to select which products will appear here on a product by product basis. So in order to do that, I am going to exit out of this area again. I've got another tab open. I'm going to go to my apps. I'm sorry, apps here. And then we'll go to the search and discovery app. Now, if you don't have this app installed, you can go to the Shopify app store and download it. It's free and it's created by Shopify. I think most stores have it by default, but you may have to install it yourself. And from here, we're going to go to recommendations. So you can see that we've got complementary products and related products. So let's click on this 11 inch tablet and the complementary products are those three products that are showing in this buy together and save. So we've got the main product here and then we've got the other three products that we that are considered complementary. So we can go ahead and change these if you want. You can click in this box and browse and it will pull up a listing of your products. Let's go ahead and select a few here and unselect a few here. And we'll add those. So for this particular section, we recommend you only choose up to three. So it looks nice in the grid, but you could add more if you wanted to, just know that it might not look quite as good and it might stretch down the page if you add too many. So back in here, I've made the changes here. You want to make sure to save. So I'm not going to save those in this case, but um, if you save them, then obviously these products would now appear down here. So that's how you set up the buy together and save. We've also got related products and these are, you can see these are all auto generated. So this is based on Shopify's recommendations engine about what actual customers have purchased based on those who have purchased this particular product, the 11 inch tablet, other products might have other purchases may have been for some of these products here. You can also go in and add your own if you want by clicking browse, but those will show down here in this recommendations. So if we go down to the product recommendations section here, 
Those are populated using the Search and Discovery app also, just in case you were wondering. So that covers how to set up the bundling options. So hopefully that's been helpful. So there's just one other feature that I wanted to talk about. We actually have a separate video about how to set this up, but I'm just going to reference it here so you're aware that it exists. And it is this compare products section here. So this section allows you to create a product comparison tool of this product compared to some other products that might be similar to it. And you notice if we scroll down here, you don't actually see this section, even though it is enabled and visible, but that's because we need to specify the products for it. So if I click on this section heading, you can see that these products are here, but they're disabled. This product is set to draft. So we could go in and create some products in here and I will talk about how we can set this up and have different products for different comparisons on different product pages. So check out our other videos for that. I'll put a link in the description. Otherwise, it is there for you to use and we will talk about it in that video. So I think that about wraps it up for today. I hope this video has been helpful. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to our support staff. We'd be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.